Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is unions in healthcare. Now, I can guarantee you I'm going to get into trouble today because no matter what I say, it, people are not going to like it. So, but that's okay. If we're going to talk about healthcare finance, we have to talk about unions in healthcare. So, there are a variety of healthcare workers that are unionized. So the, a lot of the medical technicians and the phlebotomists in the hospital are unionized. Nurses are unionized. About 20% of, of nurses nationwide are in unions. There's even physicians that are unionized. They are in California. There's not a lot of them. But yes, even doctors are unionized as well. So the ability for healthcare workers and specifically nurses to unionize was relatively recent. So it was in a 1974 amendment to the National Labor Relations Act, which goes back to President FDR, right? That's when all the initial sort of uh, union uh, rights sort of came along. And uh, for reasons that we're going to talk about with the implications of striking, they didn't want healthcare workers involved with that. But the, the, this change occurred in 1974. And it was, as a result, the number of healthcare workers in unions has grown, and it actually continues to grow. So there's about 14 million people nationwide in unions, about 7 million are in public employee unions, and about 7 million are in private uh, employee unions. And overall, the numbers of folks in unions have been shrinking, but the number of folks in healthcare units has actually been growing. Not a ton, but it's been growing. Okay, what do they ask for? They ask for things like increased wages or wage security, uh, benefits, especially health insurance or health care for themselves. Uh, has to do with their, their workloads and not only workloads for the sake of work, but also just workloads as, a, as an issue, a patient safety, patient safety issue. In other words, sometimes they would have agreements around, okay, what, what was the maximum sort of nurse to patient ratio that would be uh, allowed, not only for the safety of the patient, but also, Actually, with COVID, there has been an increased demand or desire to unionize because of things like PPE, protective equipment, right, for the safety of the healthcare workers themselves. They are asking, you know, they were asked to, you know, go without PPE or without, you know, N95 masks, etc. And so through collective bargaining, uh, trying to have a better situation around that. Okay. Now, what are the four largest uh, unions when it comes to uh, nurses and healthcare workers in America. Number one is the SEIU, the Surf Empl Service Employees International Union uh, on the east. That has the that has obviously many different industries represented, but they have the largest number of healthcare workers in it. Number two is the National Nurses United. Number three is the AFL-CIO, which of course again has many, many different industries, but includes healthcare workers as part of it. And the third one is uh, the United Food and Commercial uh, Workers International Union. Okay, so now this gets to the highly controversial uh, part because if you join a union, then you sort of mentally and physically and emotionally have to prepare yourself to strike because that is what provides the collective bargaining leverage to go to the employer, whether it be the hospital, etc., to ask for the wages and the benefits and the workloads and the safety uh, requirements, etc., etc. Now, that brings up huge implications for patient care because striking means essentially, okay, you've got Joe and Jane sick in the hospital and I'm not going to show up to work. Okay, well, what are the implications of not showing up to work for uh, patient care? And to a certain extent, the flip side of the coin is the hospital administrators, they know this. And for like all of the whether they're unionized or not unionized, healthcare workers, whether they be med techs or, or phlebotomists or nurses or doctors, the administration could be like, you know, we're gonna not give you good wages or benefits, or we're not gonna, we're not gonna give you safe workloads, or maybe we're not gonna provide a safe work environment. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna strike? Are you gonna literally desert Joe and Jane uh, patient here in the hospital? You're gonna abandon them? And so to a certain extent, this issue of patient care is, Potentially, you know, one on one side of the issue, it might say that's exploited by the administration. On the other side of the issue, they, you might say that you know it's immoral or unethical for uh, a healthcare worker to strike because it could literally kill people. And they've actually done studies on this. And this one, this one particular study, again, it's just one study, um, found that there was a 19.4 percent increase in hospital mortality during a nurses' strike. And there was a uh, during nurses' strikes. They, they looked at like 34,000 uh, patients. Uh, and then there was a 6.5% increase in the readmission rates, again, during the strike. 
and they looked at the 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 care before the strike. They looked at the care after the strike, and they're like, no, it was just during the strike was when this happened. Now, also interestingly, they also looked at hospitals that found like replacement nurses versus that didn't find replacement nurses, and interestingly, they found that it didn't really matter in terms of that mortality. So. You, you know, they, you would you would think that if you had replacement nurses, that that would help, but apparently it didn't. Okay, so, but the flip side of the issue is, is okay. Well, hospitals that are unionized, where the nurses have a like, look, you know, we're we're you know advocating for a safer workload so that we're not taking care of as many patients, and so it's safer for the patients, etc. That they have, there's evidence to show that they have lower those hospitals with unionized nurses have lower hospital acquired infections and that overall over time they actually have lower readmission rates because the nurses are able to do a better job with their patients because they're not spread so thin over such a large number okay so it's kind of both sides of the argument i'm trying to be fair and objective here okay now of all the physicians that probably would want to be unionized, it would be the interns and the residents, right? Because they're the ones who work the longest hours, they're given the longest patient, heart, large patient loads, et cetera, et cetera. And so for actually quite a long time, there, ha there is a union for some, a very limited number, but for some interns and residents. And it's called the Committee of Interns and Residents, the CIR for short. It's part of the SEIU and it represents, a, and it's typically they're called house staff, because they kind of live at the hospital, that's why they're called residents. Uh, they don't literally live at the hospital, but they spend so much time there, that's why they have that name. Um, it's about 17,000 interns and residents across the country in California, Florida, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, New Mexico, and Washington, D.C. I did my medical training in Illinois and Maryland, so I, I never even knew there was a union for, uh, for residents. I can tell you that there were absolutely times where I felt like I was being uh, taken advantage of. Uh, I think, like... Most residents would probably say that. Um, I can tell you just as, an, as a nurse, my, so my wife's a nurse, um, uh, was a nurse in, in Maryland, and so she was not unionized there, and they had, and it was in Baltimore, at Johns Hopkins Hospital, and they had a huge winter storm one time in Baltimore where they didn't have very good snow removal, and so like the nurses that were supposed to come on shift, they couldn't get to the hospital. Now, while this snowstorm was happening, my wife was on her shift at the hospital. Okay, my wife and her team of nurses could not go home for three days. So they split themselves up between day shift and night shift, and they would do 12 on and 12 off. And if they weren't working, they literally slept in the hospital. And they did this for three days. And th during Hurricane Harvey down in Houston, there's many stories of doctors and nurses and all the other employees at the hospital. They, they were there for like over a week because every, like, they were literally flooded. They couldn't get in, they couldn't get out. And so, like, and you know, my wife was in her 20s and you know, she didn't have a family. And so, like, she kind of looks back at this as like, oh, that was crazy. But you could imagine if you had like kids or if you had like, you know, elderly relatives that you were like taking care of, I mean, there were like huge ramifications if you were like stuck at the hospital for three days. So the question becomes, okay, well, what sort of, um, like, Bad snowstorms and poor snow removal in Baltimore have happened before. It's not like the first time it's ever happened. It's not their first rodeo. Like, the hospital hadn't necessarily gone through, like, the precautions of, like, what to do in case, like, they knew the weather was coming. They could have done something to maybe have more nursing coverage, etc. But the point is, is that potentially when you have environments where you don't have unionizations, you're, you're, you're essentially, whether it be through like your own conscience or what have you, you're like, look, I'm dedicated to my patients and I'm going to do whatever it takes, regardless if you're a med tech or a phlebotomist or a nurse or a doctor or whatever. And that could potentially set you up to be exploited from a wage benefits, workload, safety perspective. So like I said, no matter what I say, I'm going to like upset people but that's okay. We don't shy away from difficult topics here on A Healthcare Z. But I wanted to bring up uh, unions in healthcare and some important issues related to them. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.